I make Spider-Man suits. Or more adequately, I guess you could say that I make Spider-Man costumes or cosplays or whatever the such, but I prefer the term Spider-Man suit. I was inspired to do it by other creators like Godzilla Mendoza or uh, John Hay or the guys at DIY Costume Squad. I thought their stuff was so cool and I always wanted to make my own Spider-Man costume and uh, eventually I figured out how. Uh, since then, you know, of course I started out by, you know, using methods shown to me by other creators and stuff, but, you know, as I went on and grew older, I learned how to make my own costumes with my own methods, and I think as of recently, I finally reached a point where, like, I can truly say that the way I make these costumes are pretty much wholly original, and I'm... I guess I'm gonna go through them all and show them off to you now in a YouTube video. That's fancy. Okay, by the way, um, I'm not changing the uh, avatar, by the way. This is just a little hobbled together look. This is as close as we're gonna get to this right now. Okay, so this is my Spider-Man Edge of Time suit. It uses red clear dot fabric. It's very fancy. And it uses this super cool faded blue Liverpool fabric. I intentionally chose these colors because I know in certain lighting, both of them can look kind of dull, but they also have the capability to look like super bright and colorful and you know, your classic typical average Spider-Man stuff. But I still wanted it to have the ability to lean into the more, you know, gray, muddier colors the actual costume this is based off of has. This is my most recent costume. So it does have a bunch of fitted upgrades that a lot of my older suits won't have. And we are going chronologically, by the way. So this, my costumes will get shittier as we go on. Don't worry. This costume has a very, God damn it. This costume has a brand new zipper, or not zipper. I'm lying to you. This costume has a very uh, useful Velcro system. Essentially, it keeps the back completely fastened while I wear it. Not to mention, I also improved the legging pattern. Uh, I actually took the advice of my friend, uh, Zach, also known as Sensational Spidey, who is a amazing, amazing Spider-Man suit maker. This guy is insane. And he suggested adding a middle panel to your Spider-Man leggings in order to keep the leggings from bunching up when you have to attach them on with something like a button, or I guess in this case, more Velcro. But again, thank you, Zach. You should totally check him out. He's got his own YouTube video that's all about teaching you how to make your own like super advanced Spider-Man suit. If you don't know how to sew though, that thing will make you shit your pants. Don't, don't. That's, that's like a advanced tutorial at minimum. I'm gonna be making my suit tutorial video soon though. So don't worry. You will still need to know how to sew though. So, so there still might be some shitty pants. You know, get your wet wipes and your toilet paper. You know, cause you wet wipe first and then you hit yourself, uh, okay. Here is my Peter B. Parker suit. The mask actually comes attached to the costume on this one because you'll remember in a previous video I made with this costume, I kept talking about how my neck was showing while I was wearing the suit. So that wasn't something I liked. So I made it so that you could attach the neck to the mask of the costume, therefore preventing that issue. I wish I could get close to the camera with a, with a, I don't have any lights I can shine on this to get you some detail. Hold on chat. I just said chat as if I was live. I go live by the way, please check it out. I wanted to use red Liverpool for the red sections of this costume because I knew I wasn't going to be able to replicate the Z pattern from the Into the Spider-Verse suit that it has on its fabrics. So I figured I would just go for the next best. So I just figured I would go for the next best thing and pick a pattern that like could at least slightly resemble something like that from a distance. Of course, I also went with the blue ribbed spandex for the blue sections. This is also to keep this suit in line with the counterpart to this costume. One of my magnum opi, because I have multiple, I would say my, my 
one of my other magnum opi is this thing, but look, look, it's not important. My magnum opus, my Into the Spider-Verse suit. This suit also uses ribbed fabric to replicate you know, some shading details that are shown in the film. I specifically chose clear dot black spandex for this because I knew that if I used that clear dot black texture in certain lighting, it would make the wearer look like it had the comic book shading on him. So I knew that with my Miles suit, especially with the Miles one, he had to have the shading. I was okay with this one not having it because if I used clear dot red, which looks like this, I think it would be too pink. And I think the Peter B. Parker suit is a lot more of an orangey red. And honestly, the Liverpool would have given me what I wanted more in color. Because if I were to do the red clear dot, I'd be sacrificing an accurate color, which I don't think I'd be okay with in this instance. Uh, these, my End of the Spider-Verse suit and my Peter B. Parker suit, uh, these are some of my favorite costumes I've ever made. It's really cool to have a matching set that I can wear with a friend. And I have. Okay. This suit, I didn't technically make. Okay. I did not tech, I did not. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. I did not make this costume. I want this to be very clear, but I at least wanted to mention it because I know somebody would have said something if I didn't. I'm also going to take my mask off now. Hold on, y'all. I have to make sure I look good. I'm not trying to be on camera looking like ass. Yeah, no, essentially I ended up making the lenses for this costume I ordered from. I don't wanna like, I don't remember what the full name of this Instagram account is. I just know the guy, he's really cool, makes cool costumes. Boom, this is him. I paid this guy to make this costume a long time ago because I knew I wanted to make a video covering Marvel versus Capcom, Spider-Man, and I've been eyeing his work for a while, and I was like, ooh, I'm making YouTube money now. I can buy something from him. And I did, and I got this suit. I'm really happy with the way it turned out. The printed fabric, of course, is gorgeous to look at. If a lot of you guys don't recognize this suit and are, you, you know, you're like, oh, what the fuck is he talking about? I've never seen this suit before. This suit I wore in my Spider-Man Brutality video, which didn't get recommended to a lot of you because it was age-restricted. So if you want to watch a really good video, it's actually the first green screen video I ever made. So go watch it. I still think it's a, it's a hoot. Kuna. Oh, um, we have a guest, by the way, this time we have a fish. Uh, he's in a fish bowl. He's over there. His name is Kuna. I don't want to grab him because I'm scared to grab him, but I have a picture of him. I'll put on screen. He's right over there to my right. Everyone say hi, Kuna. Hi, Kuna. That's Trace Fish. Okay, next suit, next suit, next suit. Spider-Man 2099. This costume is one of my favorites I've made in recent, you know, months because it's just a, it's a nice, you know, cost, it's a nice closet filler, you know what I mean? Sometimes I like to go in my closet, look around, see what I've done. And, you know, every now and then I like to see a suit that I've made that isn't just a classic Spider-Man costume. And this suit, is it. The fabrics are gorgeous. I wanted to pick fabrics that could really like blend into being black really easily. For example, this shiny fabric turns like really dark blue when worn. And this is already dark blue Liverpool. You can see it on the arms. And the red is made out of this like fucking octagonish fucking pattern. I don't even know what the fuck it is. It looks cool. It looks like dystopian and futuristic. I talked about this very thoroughly in my Spider-Man 2099 cosplay video, and you know, if you are interested in my endeavors in costume making, I have an entire playlist dedicated to every video I've made that was about a Spider-Man costume. The old ones are kind of cringe, but you get to see me make some cool costumes. Next suit boy, the Scott Johnson Spider-Man suit, AKA, I like to call it the nostalgia suit because it's based off of Scott Johnson's very nostalgic Spider-Man art. This is another one I made a video on, but you know, for some of you guys with your, you know, 2020 vision and your keen eyes or whatever, you'll notice that this suit's webbing is actually kind of faded. Um, that's because I washed it since I've worn, you know, it for you guys on video. Of course, I still haven't fixed the massive fucking rip that happened 
from when I wore it on the fucking roof. Roll the clip. <laughs> Dude, that is terrible. There's a hole in it now. Oh, unironically, my day is ruined. Hold on, y'all. I have to zip this one up. You guys know this one. You guys remember this one. Okay. This is my ultimate spider-man suit that i bought from rpc um the reason i call it the ultimate spider-man suit is because you know if you look at this thing and you're familiar at all with the design of ultimate spider-man you know this isn't actually the ultimate spider-man suit it doesn't really even look anything like it honestly the closest thing about it that makes it even like resemble ultimate spider-man is the fact that the front logo is miles morales's spider logo from you know, his early years as Ultimate Spider-Man just edited to make it look like Peter's. I guess you could say that it uses the Ultimate Spider-Man back logo from Shattered Dimensions, but that back logo is just the Amazing Spider-Man back logo, just put on a different suit. That's my one gripe with this in-game costume is that it doesn't even have the right back logo. Um, this is another one of those cases where, like, I didn't make anything on the costume except for the lenses, just like with that Marvel vs. Capcom Spider-Man costume. Again, if you want to see, you know, this costume in a more in-depth fashion, there's a video you can watch about it. Then that playlist I told you about earlier, if you were listening and paying attention, please don't put me in the fucking side tab when you watch me. I put effort into these videos, okay? Some of you guys don't even notice the funny edits I do because you're too busy playing fucking Fortnite on the other monitor. Fuck you. That was so raw and genuine. Ah, shit. Ah, shit. Webman. Now this is one of my favorite costumes. I had a lot of fun making the Webman suit because, you know, I've made me f like plenty of classic Spider-Man suits. But this time I really got to flip the design on its head and sort of go like in the complete opposite direction with this one while also kind of being still in the ballpark of what I usually do. I wanted to, you know, change a lot of things with this costume because it's supposed to be evil Spider-Man. And I'm thinking evil Spider-Man, let's go in the complete opposite direction with like all of Spider-Man's like usual design features. For example, the spiders are upside down on the front and back. This is a controversial design choice I've seen people complain about when, you know, it's used very rarely. I like seeing an upside down, you know, spider whenever I can. I just think, you know, has to work a certain way. Of course, like all Spider-Man logos do, it has to fit into the design. And I think this time I did a fairly good job making it fit in on the front and back. I'm very happy with this costume, uh, as you can tell. Of course, I, I added some small touches like having these spider webs emanate from the spider logo, which you can tell if you look closely. I also did the same thing on the back. You'll notice that the spider is right in the center of the web. I also gave him these weird red soles. They look kind of look like the Tasm soles, but they're falling apart because, you know, I don't know how to make fucking soles, but they're here and they're fun and quirky and wacky and weird. And that's kind of everything I wanted for this suit. So that's, that's Webman for you folks. Oh, baby. Now this, this is one of my best right here. This is my classic Spider-Man suit. It's sort of my take on the Ditko design, so I wouldn't really call it a Ditko suit. Um, I, if anything, I would just say it's my version of the classic Spider-Man suit. There's a couple of changes you can notice. Like, of course, I had the head of the spider pop out from the body. Same thing on the back. Part of me was actually really tempted to have it so that the head of the spider is actually down here as opposed to being up here. Uh, kind of in retrospect, I kind of wish I put the head on the bottom, but I decided against it for some reason because I'm an idiot. You can actually tell that the back logo on this one is kind of fading, but I really like that. I think it makes it look older, which this suit should kind of be, you know, it's supposed to be an older version of Peter's classic costume. I also really love how the back logo, like, blends into the fabric 
Like, I don't know if you can see any of this on camera, but in certain angles, it blends in completely. But sometimes you catch it just right. That blue back logo pops out against the velvet so hard. Not to mention the web wings. Uh, one of my old cosplay pals showed me how to do this. Oh, while I'm here, actually, there's something really cool I wanted to mention about the uh, mask for this costume. If you look at the mask from a certain angle, it'll look completely different from when you look at it from another angle. So, for example, this is me looking at you with the lenses straight on, okay? Notice how my eyes kind of look a little flat on my face. Then I slightly turn. Then you get a lot more of a shape coming in. Looks super angular, right? But then when I fully turn, this looks like a completely different lens. This is something I really recommend you think about when you're making your Spider-Man mask, is how you can make your lens have sort of a dimension to it as it flows across your face. This is good advice that I totally recommend you take in sync with my Spider-Man mask tutorial video, which you should totally use as a, you know, a little bit of a, a, a dip in the pool for making your own Spider-Man costume, which I will, of course, be making a tutorial for soon. A better one. All right, what's next? Kane! I'm really happy with this suit because this was the... This was one of the first times I really deviated from making a classic suit. I was like, I really want to make something different this time. I've been in kind of a suit rut. This suit took me a long time to finish because of that. I was like, I don't really know what the, you know, how happy I'm going to be with this when it's done. Um, I'm not sure if I'll ever wear it, which is true. I don't ever wear my, you know, offshoot Spider-Man costumes as much as I wear my classic red and blue. That's something I'll admit to. But I can't lie, when I finished this cane costume and put it on, that was sort of one of those moments where I understood why I should have finished this thing sooner because I really like the way it turned out. These leggings have like unique paneling on them. They're not just regular red leggings. The front has a more durable Liverpool fabric and the back is actually ventilated with red ribbed spandex so that the suit's more breathable. Of course, you've got paneling running down the front as a backdrop for the logos on both sides, on the front and back. Actually, earlier in this suit's life, it had points at the eyes. Those actually ended up falling off, so that's why they're not on the final suit. So rest in peace, a cooler version of the lenses. My only problem with this suit, actually, I would say, is that the red stitching that runs along the black sections is really ugly. Um, this was something I wanted to do because I wanted to sort of give the suit like a vibe of like unkemptness and sort of a lack of care for presentability. Like this is Kane we're talking about. You know, this motherfucker doesn't really give a fuck about the rules and shit about, you know, being Spider-Man. You know, he's just gonna do whatever he can and he's like, fuck it, whatever. He's like a, he's an edgy boy. So I wanted to give him a little bit of edge by giving him that, you know, messy seam line. Doesn't really look that good in practice uh, cause the rest of the costume has these really clean seam lines. It might've worked if I made the rest of the seam lines super messy like I did on this one, but I, I it, it wasn't my best idea and I'll probably cover it with some piping later in this suit's life. Now, now that my show is, is more and more relevant than it used to be you guys are definitely going to recognize this design this is my nick v2 suit now a lot of you guys won't fucking recognize it as that you're gonna see it as as the fucking spider-man suit from my spider-man tv show which yes you would be correct this is the same design from my spider-man tv show just minus the web wings. But this is where that design came from, and it was this suit. I liked this suit so much, and I thought it was so unique that it had to be the look of my Spider-Man for my show. Um, the most notable thing about this costume is its use of the leg lines. Hold on, yeah, it has lines that run down the leg. I actually like really like this and I love whenever these big bulky ass lines appear on a Spider-Man suit. Um, I think it does a really good job of connecting all the red portions of your costume together. This suit uses 
red clear dot spandex and a blue shiny material, which I don't remember the name of, but I will find an equivalent for you and put it on screen. Next one. Man, I was really a fan of the, of the, of the clear dot red back in the day. This is my old spider Sona design um, known as the Spider-Man is Real suit. Um, back in the day, uh, I had a webcomic called Spider-Man is Real. Um, I didn't like the story anymore, so I wiped it off the face of the planet. Uh, I plan on reviving it at some point later in my life. I don't know when. Uh, you guys caught me with the 500, or you guys caught me with the 5,000 like goal, and now I'm forced to make a TV show, so that's kind of my main focus right now. I've used this exact same fabric combination on a different costume. This was my Ultimate Spider-Man suit, which you guys have probably seen me show off in older videos. And I do it so frequently because it's one of my fucking favorites that I've ever made. Uh, I just think the red and the blue pop really well together. Um, I, I hope I can remember what fucking brand of blue fabric this is so I can buy it again. Cause man, I am a huge fucking fan of it. Uh, the design of this suit though, not so fucking much. Um, I thought the mask for it looked like shit. Um, I could never get the web pattern for it to be right. So that makes it automatically fucking ass. Um, the mask is kind of the most important part of the suit. Um, but it looks like shit. So the whole thing kind of looks like shit. Y'all, we're getting to the old shit now. We're getting to the really old shit. Okay. So this is my... This is my Scarlet Spider costume. Now you may notice he looks a little bare in the under region. Um, that's because this suit is literally just made out of like different compression sportswear clothing. Now I know that definitely makes sense for a Scarlet Spider costume, but to me, it always felt sort of lazy. Uh, I feel like this costume, while maybe accurate, it's not really all that good if you match it up with some of the other things I've actually had more of a hand in making. This is just a trash hoodie with fucking, probably the hardest thing to make on this suit was cutting out the cardboard to fucking spray paint the emblem on. This thing ain't worth it. It's barely even worth the mention. This suit sucks. The coolest thing about it is actually nothing in fact. I hate it and I wanna make a new one at some point. Okay guys, I have an old suit of mine that's actually good my black suit now this suit is fittingly it's my most lightweight costume it's probably my most convenient to wear it's super fucking lightweight it's fucking comfortable as shit it doesn't really like come apart into too many pieces so it's super portable um i think it looks great uh it's got that you know slight hint of um metallic paint on it in terms of webbing. I kind of wish I continued it on to the legs, I'm not gonna lie, but this is actually just a spandex bodysuit that I painted, so it's a lot easier to paint boots when you're constructing the costume from the ground up, but this is not the case on this one. I might actually remake this suit because I've been thinking about doing a series where I create my own live action Spider-Man designs only in mock-up, okay? Only in mock-up, I am not making a movie. You guys can trap me into making a TV show, but I will not be making a fucking movie. Yeah, no, but I've always been a really big fan of this uh, black suit that I made. It's got big fucking big old white eyes. I know a lot of people have said it's made the suit look too friendly, but I don't know. I kind of like the blank white eyes. I'm a fan. I like this costume. I still wear it to this day. All right, y'all. We're getting into the deep now. Here is the first ever fully scratched costume I ever made. The Nick V1. This thing is entirely made out of Liverpool. Um, it should look like a super fucking couchy fabric kind of suit. I wanted it to be like that because, you know, when I pick fabric, I specifically pick fabric that, you know, is easy to access because the more expensive stuff, let's face it, is super expensive. 
but I think there's a huge benefit to getting, you know, fabrics that look like these, because it kind of makes it more clear that, like, huh, this isn't some fucking multi-million dollar product somebody made to put in a movie. This is, like, a costume, a cosplay, right? But it still has that, like, genuine Spider-Man feeling. I think Spider-Man is one of the best characters that this sort of, like, reality of, you know, superhero cosplay making. It's kind of the, Spider-Man's kind of your best option. You know, a lot of the stuff you can get your hands on looks super couchy and super homemade, but that's good. I think that's one of the biggest strengths of this costume is that it looks super homemade. That being said, uh, nowadays it's kind of uncomfortable. The uh, mask sucks to wear and the visibility for it is So, uh, the recording stopped. Um, we don't have a lot of storage on my camera left, so we have to make this quick. Um, basically this costume is super uncomfortable to be in in terms of the lenses and shit. That's why I'm always wearing a different fucking mask whenever I wear this thing out to a con. Uh, nowadays, you probably wouldn't see me wearing this thing. I think I have so much better suits to choose from and we're gonna move on to even shittier ones now. So let's keep going. This one is very controversial for uh, my fans because it's very over-designed, as you can tell. Um, it's got all sorts of black lines running all up and down it. It's, of course, covered in fucking different textured material. Um, this suit was so much puff paint work, and I have such a terrible work ethic that it took me six whole months to finally finish. And after that, it still needed many repairs and remakings and four different fucking masks but um i still really like it <laughs> it's kind of a guilty pleasure suit for me i don't know why but wearing it sort of makes me feel like i'm actually wearing like a marvel production suit in terms of the feel uh not only the look but also the feel uh because it's super i don't want to say it's uncomfortable but it's very apparent that I'm wearing something. I think that's the best way to describe it. And fun fact, this suit also has small baby pockets. I put these pockets here to cover up a paint error, okay? These are inaccurate. These are not actually on the real Marvel Strike Force suit. Um, I should mention that, by the way. Uh, this costume was based off a mobile game, Spider-Man. Yeah, I need to make more costumes based off of things because I have kind of an embarrassing resume of remakes right now. I have one good one. Actually, I have a couple good. I need to stop being so mean to myself. Hey guys, we have like four suits left. Um, and all of them stink. Okay, so this is one of my old Spider-Man cosplay jumpsuits. Uh, has a zipper that goes down the back of it. And essentially, if you know, you haven't noticed, this is an older design of the other suit that I showed you. It's, again, the Spider-Man is a real suit. Honestly, this is probably the best of my jumpsuit costumes. And you might, you might even catch me wearing this from time to time. There's something kind of charming about this jumpsuit that I really like. And you know, honestly, it ain't so bad. I quite like it. This is my only battle damaged Spider-Man costume. I don't know, this was a design I made back when I was still in high school, so it looks like garbage, because everything you do in high school is fucking stupid. Um, this is what the back looks like. Uh, of course, you can see my sewing job has uh, not always been as good. I, I did a lot of burning on this one. There were, there were a lot of fucking burns in this costume when I was battle damaging it. But honestly, I think a lot more people should be burning their battle damaged suit. It makes the tears feel a lot more authentic if there's some, you know, sort of damage around the tear itself, which a burn will usually do. So I recommend if you want to battle damage your Spider-Man costume, definitely try burning it. Next one. Here is... Another classic suit I made. Uh, this one is very painfully old. It is not aged very well. 
at all. Um, here's the back logo for it. This thing just looks like shit. I can't even fucking... I don't even know what to say, y'all. It looks like shit. And then... We have... The, the first... Spider-Man costume... I ever made. The first classic Spider-Man costume I ever made. And it was... This one. Um, it has the... Spider-Man Homecoming back logo along with this terribly sewn on spider logo on the back. I'm kind of off camera right now. I'm not worried about how on camera I am right now, which I probably should be. But yeah, this is my very obvious first ever Spider-Man costume. But it's not bad. Honestly, I find it kind of charming. It's a nice reminder of how far I've come. I, I'd definitely never wear this today but it's still a costume I really enjoy having in my closet um it's actually not even on my closet it's on the wall in my room I've had this thing up for ages because you know it's my first fucking spider-man suit what are you gonna do but uh definitely come a long way since this old thing and with that that is pretty much every single spider-man suit that I've ever made that I still have, except for the one on the mannequin behind me. I did not design this, my friend Spider Pleb did. Shout out to Spider Pleb. Anyway, that's, that's the end of this video. Goodbye, y'all.